Okay, so this is uh, July the 17th, 2016, uh, approximately 10 a.m. I'm on the uh, stomping grounds of Old Jico. I moved here in the summer of 1946. Maybe it has changed considerably. So I'm looking uh, south, and this is the that road that's going in there. It's the road that we pulled into uh, in 1946. We moved to Chico. And this is just a two-lane dirt road at this time. At that time, with the uh, hay trucks going back and forth, farmers' hay trucks. Very little traffic. A few bicycles. So now I'm going into the, uh, the grounds and uh, to meet a chap named Bruce H, who's uh, an avid uh, historian. So, uh, I think he's interested in the, generally in the Canadian history and specifically Scarborough history, and in particular, the history of Jico. So I'm in there now and meet Bruce. So here I am in the, uh, the grounds of Jico on the south side of Eglinton, and this uh, chap, his name is uh, Bruce H. Bruce. And he lives here somewhere, uh, I believe in Scarborough, locally. Not and sure. uh, my name is Warren Evans, a.k.a. Corky, nicknamed Corky when I lived in Chico. And uh, we're starting right here with uh, Building 16, which is one of the original buildings of Chico. And that's it in this full length and breadth right down to the end. And it was on this uh, particular lawn in front of this building in the summer of 1947 that Peggy Wilkins, my girlfriend at the time, my young girlfriend, she had a fight with uh, one of the characters in my book. His name is Wilkins. I won't reveal his real name. Sorry, not Wilkins, but uh, Wilf. And uh, they had a real tussle, tussle on that front lawn right there. Thronged by a lot of kids. And it was Easter. Sunday, 1947, and the ground, the, the grass was uh, rather wet and muddy, and she was in her Easter dress. Well, it didn't look like an Easter dress after the fight was finished, but uh, Piggy came out uh, the winner on that particular fight. That's only because Wilf allowed her to win. So that's, that's one of the memories, Building 16. And I also had a girlfriend that lived in that building. This was after I moved away from Chico. And her name was Joan de Bruges, a very pretty girl of uh, Hungarian descent, black hair, black eyes. Gorgeous. And unfortunately, she died uh, several years ago. But I did meet her before she died. We had a conversation. So that's building 16. And this tower up here, that was being built when I still lived in Jico. And a very tragic accident, a boy was killed, climbing up the center of that tower, fell down, that was the end of him. I won't reveal his name. So this is the main road in the Jico, called Civic Road. It was called Civic Road when I lived here many years ago. And we're looking, uh, at least I'm looking east and panning around and coming back looking to the west and that's Warden Avenue over there and back in the Jico days this street which is only a really a two lane dirt road mainly for people was filled with the uh, Jicoites walking this way or that way mostly to the rec hall which is down there and this is building Number 17 still stands and in perspective there's 16 in the water tower and come back and this is 17. It's now called that. So this is where building 3 once stood and this road is where the Evans family pulled in in the summer of 1946 and uh, I recall being in the back of the truck and there were kids skip roping and riding their bicycles and tricycles along this road and I was terrified 
long way from West End Toronto. Didn't know anybody. But that soon changed. I made a lot of good friends. So that was in summer 1946. And building three would be about here. The wreck hall we've met back there somewhere. A huge wreck hall. It was in two parts actually. One was for mainly sports like floor hockey. And uh, then there was dancing, dances, dances every week. Friday nights, Saturday nights. The dances were extremely popular and sometimes extremely rowdy. But at that time, there was, there was no druggies around. If people were high, it was only on beer. <laughs> so that's the original road coming in from Chico. Now we're looking north here. And that's where our movie truck trundled in. Trundled in in, uh, oh, June. Actually, I was taken out of school, pulled out of school, Kent School, to come here. So it would be uh, probably mid-June, 1946. Completely wraparound farms up there on the other side of Eccleston Avenue and ballparks. It's very pretty. Well, it's probably a sunny day just like this. According to Sun Time, that was only a few seconds ago, 1946. So building three was over there. It takes a great leap of the imagination to visualize all these things back in the 1940s and early 50s and building 144 which was the last building in Jico heading uh, east was right in there where those, the fences now it's a car lot we come down here I think that's the jail now there used to be buildings down there, and the original police station was in that area. One of the Jico buildings. So this was where Building 2 once stood. And beyond that, down at the end, was the administration building, known as Building Number 1. And it was the most posh building in the uh, community, out of uh, 13 buildings. And it was two floors. They had carpets in the... Uh, in the uh, corridors and I remember there's one family in there that the boys names were Jethro, Orlean and Julian. The parents named them after uh, Shakespearean characters and they're they were floor hockey players. Jethro, Orlean and Julia. So standing at the endless way into Jico looking north this is Civic Road looking west and it was in 1948 that Chico was invaded by the Scarborough Junction gang and their affiliates they were angry because they were kicked out of the rec hall they'd been drinking there was fist fights and they came back in large numbers to beat up Gigoites. So they came down this road, motorcycles, truck foes, but we knew they were coming. As soon as they got to this point right here, this general area here, they were trapped because the men and the able-bodied able -bodied, uh, teenagers for that car to go by. I think I'm talking to myself. Came up from behind them. They came from the, uh, so the men and older teenagers poured out of the buildings, 16, 17, 18, 26, 30, 34, 39, and also number three behind me, and number two over here, and number one from this area, and the big fight started right here. 
huge fight. Went over there, there was a cul-de-sac over there. A lot of blood, <coughs> a lot of blood. <clears throat> and no police around at that time to break it up. Although the police were called, but by the time they got here, it was a little bit too late. A lot of people injured. So that's mentioned in my book, Corky, Picky, and the Goldfinch. It's a, put an extensive chapter on it. Oh boy. So I'm standing with my back to uh, building number three where I lived from 1946 to the winter of 5152. Looking across the Old Civic Road, that's where the original school, we called it the uh, Yellow School, once stood. And there was a fire hall right there. Adjacent to the fire hall to the uh, west was a, the blind man's store. And then adjacent to that was the gray school, the biggest school in the community. And no sign of that fire hall now. It'll take a great leap of the imagination to know that once upon a time, a school stood here. Not a big school. It was the first school in the Juco, Juco community. It was right here. Building 86, which was the former first aid ambulance building in the wartime uh, plant. So this is it. I'm going to come in a little bit closer. As you can see me right here. All right. And uh, Mr. Johnson up here with my finger, right here. Donald Johnson, born in 1917, died in 1998. He was a WW2 vet, stationed in Sicily, and he was a one of the the, medic, the medics over there. He tended to a lot of dying people, and I remember he cried every. Uh, Remember state services in the rec hall over here. But uh, he and I kept in touch and I still have all his letters. And a lot of these people in this photograph are unfortunately have gone to Valhalla. At least I hope that's where they went to. Some someplace nice. But they were all my, uh, I knew them all at one time. This is me here with a fridge cut. As you can see, I haven't changed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. That's where the old school stood, right here. So this is where building two was. And we're looking slightly uh, to south to the southeast. And this is where the Hollinger bus pulled in every day, seven days a week. Several times a day, back and forth to Dawes and Danforth. That open area there, what was bigger in the back in the 1940s and 50s. And we used to, uh, in the wintertime, we would hitch a bike uh, ride on the back of the bus, hang on to the bumper, and skid along the ice while the bus took off. Extremely dangerous. But as you can see, 
At least I survived that. But I was one of those reckless boys at that time. And that's looking north. And over there, there was absolutely nothing but fields. Baseball diamond. behind that white building in the distance and Corky and Peggy were in that ball diamond in uh, the summer of 1949 Peggy was on the verge of moving to uh, permanently to Vancouver it's an extremely emotional time for Corky and for Peggy so she decided that she and I should get married and she knew all the vows and we went out to the ballpark in the evening under the stars and repeated the vows and we married two young kids we married and we consider ourselves husband and wife did we consummate the marriage i'm not going to mention okay <laughs> some things have to, some things had to remain private so this is the back of uh, where building number two used to stand and over there where the ford dealership is there was a one of the buildings had been converted to a catholic school the only catholic school in the community but the first school the first school was over here. That was, as I mentioned before earlier, Building 84. That was the first school. And then the uh, the Gray School opened up. Then another school beside Building Number Three was called the Yellow School. So in total, there were four schools in Jiko as the community grew. And this again, this was the parking lot. It's much bigger back then. Didn't have all these cars. Ford dealership was not there. Where the Hollinger bus pulled in and made a turn, came back out and went back to Dawson Danforth. This is how most of the teachers arrived to uh, to their workplaces. Hollinger bus. So I'm at the corner of Prudham Road, which is the main entrance going into uh, Old Jico and uh, Eggleton Avenue. And right there in the corner, on the south uh, east corner of Prudham and Civic. Where my dog Prince was, where my dog Prince was struck by a car, and he ran into a culvert, which is right there where that post is. The culvert's no longer there. I published an article in the Toronto Telegram at the time. So right there. And uh, nobody can get him out of the culvert. The fire uh, firemen couldn't do it. They were too big. But my friend Joey Pervertier, who was smaller than I was, he squirmed into the uh, the culvert and pulled Prince out. And Prince was taken to uh, agent court, the only veterinarian around at that time. He received 107 stitches. And Doctor, uh, his name is Doctor Fisher, saved his life. So that's a story right there. The culvert is no longer there, but that's where it took place. And I presume Prince was probably chasing a car. At that time, it was just a two-lane hard dirt, hard dirt road. And uh, he paid the price, but he did live on. So again, this is Civic Road. We're looking west. It's the water tower. We called the Death Tower after the uh, that boy was killed, recklessly playing in that center tube. He was a, scaled the center tube and he lost his grip and fell down. It was not a nice way to die. Of course, very very difficult for the parents. But in 1946, when I first moved in here, this is just a dirt pathway, barely enough room for cars, but a lot of children playing. Bicycles, skipping, and the rec hall was over here. Always something to do in the farmer's fields and circling right around. We're across the road, baseball diamonds, apple orchards. We used to steal the apples, of course. We got caught once, it's not pleasant, but we survived that. <laughs> There's uh, Warren Gettys. I'd love to preserve 
those buildings. I really would. Yeah. Yeah, so if Bruce has been to see uh, uh, historian, Scarborough historian Rick Schofield. Oh. had a good conversation about Jico. So yeah, Bruce wanted to come here and get a different perspective from somebody who actually lived here. Right. And that's me. I lived here. Lucky you. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, so I believe it was in the year 19, could have been 1950. Uh, right here in front of building 18, uh, my chums and I were playing down in between the buildings around the garbage huts, making all kinds of noise, I suppose. And one man had been very heavily laced with booze. Stuck his head out the window and gave us a warning. I guess we gave him some lip. He told us to get lost. And uh, one thing led to another. And he opened up his window and he came out the window and he came after me. Big man. I was just a young scrawny kid. And I ran up here to the front of building 18. And he grabbed me, he had me on the ground. And I was writhing like a worm. He could hardly get a hold of me. And that went on for a few minutes. He had his fist up. He's going to smash me in the face. And just at that moment, his body left me. I did. What happened? It was my father, actually my stepfather, lived in building three. One of my kids went back, my uh, friends went back to get him, and he raced over here and tackled this man, threw him off my body, and they had a fist fight right here. Mr. Bingham. And my stepfather's name was Carl Peake. Well, Carl was my hero on that day, because Mr. Bingham was a big man, big arms, big fist, and he would have disfigured my face for sure. And he was heavy on booze, so he didn't care about the consequences. So there's a memory in front of Jico building number 18. We're standing near the corner of Warden Avenue and Civic. My camera's pointed to the uh, southwest, uh, and this is where the water tower is. And before that water tower was built, this was a wide open grassy area and this is where a lot of the guys played uh, football right here and Don Getty the former Premier of Alberta who was addicted to football long a very tall lean guy could run like the wind linebacker But this is where he started playing football, right here. Don Getty. So, a little memory for you, Don. I hope you rest in peace. And thank you for the memory. So Bruce was talking about that tower over there. I'm gonna zoom into that tower. It's the bell tower, is it? The bell tower? Where is it? There we are. So Bruce, Bruce has a memory of that tower that you'd like to share with the camera right now. Well, it'd be in about uh, 1966. Uh, me and my brother and a couple of friends, we scaled that tower. We made it all the way to the top until a police searchlight uh, found us and they waited for us to come down and systematically took each of us home to our parents and for a scolding. <laughs> but we, we lived to tell the tale. Okay, so unfortunately my camera is facing into the sun. We're looking north on Warden. We're coming to the first of a series of four buildings that existed during the uh, Chico days. And this is building number 30. As you can see, it's now converted to a variety of businesses. So we'll walk up here. No, okay, so now we're at the, this is building number uh, 30, behind us was 26, I believe I said that was 30, but it's 26, this is building number 30, there's some kind of an event going on down there, interesting. Nothing I recognize. So this is building number 39. 
the last building in uh, going south on Borden, the last building in the Jico, original Jico community. It was later converted to the Embers Banquet Hall and uh, in 2002 we had a very successful Chico reunion. Not only for the residents of the community of Jico, post-war community of Jico, but also the wartime plant workers. There are not too many left at that time and I'm sure they're all gone by now at this time in uh, 2016. So now we're standing near the uh, water tower and I'm looking to the northeast. Warden Avenue is behind me. And as mentioned, this is where a lot of the Jico boys played uh, football, including recently deceased Don Getty. So now I'm on Ashton B Road, and that's Warden Avenue over there, north of Jico. And this is the actual driveway that used to be Tom Hayes's, that, that led into Tom Hayes's farm. Ashton B Road used to be Tom Hayes's driveway going into his farm. And the back of his farm was a large area used in the summertime for dog races, whippets and greyhounds. And that's where, in this general area, I met Miss Burke. She was a lady who lived in Florida and traveled up here to raise her dog. It was a whippet. And Miss Burke is probably long gone, but she's well mentioned in my book. A lot of good memories. So this was Tom Hayes's uh, farm, dog races in this area here, but it takes a great leap of imagination to see all this. But it was during my lifetime. Now I'm standing in the area where once stood Atkinson's farm, which was on the north uh, west corner of Atkinson Avenue and Birchmount. And I'm north of that area. This is Ashton B Road, which leads to Birchmount. But this was once a huge farm. It's mentioned in the uh, history of Scarborough books. Atkinson's farm. It's probably a street name after him somewhere. But we spent a lot of time here. Some of that time was spent <laughs> stealing apples from his vast orchards. Got caught one time. Fired a shotgun at us. I presume in the air. At least I didn't get it. But. Again, it takes a great leap of the imagination to see Atkinson's farm in this area because now we have all these commercial enterprises, Kawasaki, etc. And there was a, a huge forest area right here. And we used to steal a chicken from Atkinson's and bring it up here and roast it. And there was a creek going through here somewhere, but I seen that no evidence of it. Uh, it's for sure they've torn down the forest, beautiful forest. They make room for all this junk here. <laughs> Apples, cherries, gooseberries, blackberries. Hello. And this would be the path that would go to what we called Horse Creek at the back of the farm. Now this farm was huge, McGregor's farm. There's no sign that, a, no evidence that a farm ever existed here. Now wrapped around homes. Not altogether attractive homes. And guinea hens used to abound here. We'd pick raspberries and the guinea hens would attack us. I presume they had their young within the thickest of the bear of the uh, bushes. So this is what we called Horse Creek when I lived in Jico. Considerably changed, but the creek is still there. Got a ways down there. We used to swim and tie ropes to trees 
and swing across the river. So this is what's left of Horse Creek. So we're in the area of Birch Mountain and Eggleton Avenue. Horses used to abound here, lots of horses. And that's why it was called Horse Creek. Horse Creek, as we called it. It's a beautiful area back then. These hydro towers weren't out there. So below that is the creek. This is a pathway, presumed takes us up to Eagleton Avenue, looking sort of northeast. So now I'm standing at the uh, northeast corner of Chico. Civic Road and Senate Road. Over there used to be a huge reservoir. Frogs, turtles, no sign of that now. A lot of buildings. I can't even pinpoint where the reservoir once was. Parking lot up there. And I believe that's a prison over there. I'll steer clear of that. So that's the end of our Jayco tour. Didn't take too long. Can't see the good watch. Just over an hour. Well, just over an hour. <laughs> and uh, refreshed a lot of memories for me. And I hope that Bruce uh, H here uh, enjoyed the, uh, the tour. Maybe learned a few things you didn't know before about Jayco. So thank you, uh, Bruce, for this, uh, this idea of meeting here. I needed a chance to come, a reason to come down here to revive these these memories that are still well within me. It was my pleasure, Warren. Thank you very much. Okay.